now I'm being joined by Peter Swittler from the OSG Baden-Baden. You played a very important game today and one year later you make the full point. I hope it's enough. Yeah, hopefully uh, it's still uh, the, the end game that Maxim is playing is still very tricky and I don't know if he is winning or not. But now we have, uh, I think, good chances of uh, uh, winning uh, winning the Bundesliga outright. If, uh, if we win today, I think we are large favourites to win tomorrow. So... Uh, yeah, uh, not a particularly good game. While we were waiting for this recording, I figured out where my mistake was, and uh, yeah, I uh, I tricked Lucky a little bit, but uh, I mean, doesn't matter. Uh, the important thing is that uh, I was able to win, and it's obviously uh, you know very very good to to win a game in a, in, a, in such an important match. That's a very decisive match. What do you think about? Uh position of Richard Richard Rapport? I think it should be around equal uh, steel. It's a, it's a really weird position. It's very difficult to understand what's happening there, but I don't think uh, anyone is better. I think uh, because of the match situation, a, uh, Irvin probably now has to play for a win because Irvin cannot just you know assume that uh, Harry will hold. Uh, so for Irvin, the draw probably is not enough anymore. And this actually gives better chances for Richard to win because uh, Irvin might have to, uh, you know, do something very risky because of the match situation. But I don't, I don't know what's going on there objectively. It's, it's, um will be exciting. We hope um, we yeah. can win this match. Um, you told us you are a bit ill today. Yeah, I I didn't feel well, but sort of luckily for me, uh, Luki can say the same. Luki was also uh, coughing, uh, and uh, we, we both uh, seemed to have caught some kind of a bug, uh, and that probably you know, was also a contributing factor to the game not being of the highest standard. But uh, such is life. What to do? <laughs> Win is a win, and um, a very important tournament is waiting for you in two weeks, the Kränke Chess Classic 2019. I'm very scared. Uh, the, the lineup is extremely strong, and uh, it's been a while since I played in a round robin of this strength. Uh, so uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. I like tournaments like this. Who doesn't like tournaments like this? But it will be very, very difficult, and um, yeah, I. I, I'm, I want to play, but I'm also very anxious about, uh, about how I will do, because it's been a while. But you have a very decent score against world champion Magnus Carlsen? I have a decent score against everybody, it doesn't matter. You, you know, they, you know, we, I am getting older faster than they are getting older, <laughs> is, is kind of the point. You know, it, it, you know, it sounds stupid, but it's not, you know, the, and... Uh, uh, yeah, it will be interesting. It will be interesting, and generally I play uh, quite well, uh, or at least I used to play quite well, in, exactly in tournaments like this, because it's much easier for me to motivate myself to play against very strong players. But uh, as I said, uh, I haven't played tournaments like this in a while, and I'm, I'm quite uh, quite anxious, but but also looking forward to it, obviously. We're looking forward to it too. As a, a lot of people know you as a commentator. Now you are in a super Grandmaster tournament. Yeah, uh, I've been uh, obviously uh, doing more and more uh, commentary work, and I like it and I enjoy it. But I, I'm, I'm still an active chess player, and I hope to. I hope to do well. And there are a lot of um, strong um, young Russian um, chess players. Um, such as Artemiev and Esipenko? Yeah, there's a new generation is coming in, obviously, and it's nice to see. It's, um, um, I mean, he was, there was never really any doubt that, uh, you know, Russia as a chess country will not stop with my generation. <laughs> but uh, Artemiev in particular is having uh, an unbelievable year. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it's obvious that uh, he is here to stay. We will see a lot more of him in the, in the coming years. Looking forward to that. Um, we collected one question from um, Chess Kids from Baden-Baden. And um, it's an opening question. Um, ca can you recommend a setup against the Pirk or modern defense? Because Magnus Carlsen play, started playing modern. 
I don't know. It's um, it, it very much depends on what your preferences are. There are some very uh, very aggressive setups which are quite good, or there are also some positional ways to play which are quite fine. But I, I guess the three pawns will be it is arguably the easiest one to to to, to learn. Just go knight c three, or four knight of three, and uh, there will be some theory involved. But it's a it's a promising way to play. But uh, no, the perk is, I used to play the perk myself in the late 90s. It's not a bad opening, but um, I don't think Magnus will single-handedly return it to the top level. You prepared um, uh, some critical moments. Yeah, and uh, starting from this position there was a sequence. I thought I was uh, making some progress. I'm trying to play against this b5 pawn and I have a nice control over the a file. And Luki played rook c4, which is a mistake. Uh, the point is, I can still play b3, and I'm sure he thought he can take on b4 here with the idea queen takes b4, d6, d5, and there's this nice skewer on the f8, a3 diagonal. But if he takes on b4, I have a uh, move rook a8, uh, and I will pick up the rook uh, on b4 later, and I'm, I'm just close to winning here. Uh, so he had to go back, and b giving me the b3 tempo is obviously quite unnecessary. And here, uh, despite this, uh, I assume it's a mistake. My position maybe is not that much better anyway. And I played rook a7 with the intention of the, after rook c8. I had this dream of playing e5 here, d takes e5, bishop takes f8. And I will show you just one variation which I thought was very beautiful, and this was why I wanted to go for this. King takes f8. I wanted to give queen h6 check, king g8, I wanted to take on g7, has to take. I go knight g5, he goes knight f8, because otherwise I give mate. I go knight 3, 4, and seemingly <coughs> there is no defense against knight f6 and I give mate. But unfortunately for me, when, I got, when we got to this position and I started checking my analysis, he goes rook c1 check here. As you can see with the knight on g5, I'm no longer covering the c1 square. I go king h2, I saw this. But now, he goes e takes d4, discover check, I have to play g3, and he has the move queen e5. And he is just in time to stop my knight f6 mate, and I can resign basically, I'm just completely lost here. And <clears throat> uh, this meant that my brilliant idea of giving mate with a lot of sacrifices just didn't work tactically at all. And then I think rook a7 is just a mistake. Because there is really no other point to putting the rook on a7. In fact, because the rook is, uh, because the queen is kind of uh, touching the rook, he has the idea of playing rook c1 check and then picking the rook up in the end. And here <clears throat> I played, I, I thought for maybe almost half of my remaining time, and I played rook a2, just stopping rook c2. He played queen c7, I played rook a7, queen b8. And here, I got up from the board and I went to check how the match is going because objectively I felt like I should probably play rook a2 and just accept the draw. But it looked to me like Paco is probably close to losing and I felt that because of the match situation there is no way I can not continue playing here. So I played rook a5 and here we come to the critical moment. He played rook c2, queen d3 d5, and this was my point, this is a trick I was very proud of. I go d5, he attacks my bishop, if I take on f8, he can make this intermediary move and he is probably better. But the whole point of my, the whole point of my plan was to meet d5 with e5, and if he takes the bishop, I can take on b5. This didn't happen in the game, but in fact, he should have taken on b4, and in this position, something we both completely missed, he can go rook c1 check. If I go king h2, he will just take on a1, give me this queen, and I'm close to lost, I think. My plan was to take, take, and go king h2. And here the move I completely missed, and he also didn't see. Queen b8, f8, protects the bishop on f1 before. And it's very easy to miss, because in the start, like when we start calculating, there are so many pieces which prevent the queen from getting to f8. But all of those pieces are now exchanged, and the bishop survives, I have to take on f6, he takes. I think I'm much worse here. I don't know if I'm lost, but I think strategically I'm in a lot of trouble here because the bishop will return to d6 and his structure is better than mine. So I think my whole brilliant continuation of not taking a draw 
probably should have cost me a lot, maybe a full point even. But instead of all that, Lucky kind of believed me. And after e5, he played knight e4. And here I take on b5, and, <clears throat> and he can no longer return to those positions. And maybe he also missed, maybe he wanted to take on f2 here, attacking my queen and preparing to take on d3 if I take on b8, but I just win by playing queen takes c2 here. He takes on c2. I take on b8, take on f8, and I go rook a8, and I win one of the two knights. <laughs> and basically, uh, after that miss, the position after rook takes b5 probably is already much, much better for me. Once again, I didn't check this with the machine, but my impression is uh, once he makes this mistake, I am uh, better maybe even winning, and I managed not to spoil anything from this moment onwards. But yeah, if he took on before on the previous move, uh, the match would have been would have been very very different. But uh, you know, such things happen.